I'm so excited. We're about to visit the Oscar Anderson House in Anchorage, Alaska. He was a pioneer who came here when it was just a tent city, and he built up several different industries and was the one who started the Anchorage Daily Times. I had the pleasure today to meet with Gail Cleary, who's going to tell us a little bit about Oscar Anderson and the house. Um, the first thing I'd like to ask you about is just who is Oscar Anderson? Why is he important? So Oscar Anderson was known as an entrepreneur and he was a businessman. He was born in Sweden in 1883 and he, is, he came to the United States with two of his brothers. Their first stop was Boston and he lived in Boston for a couple of years. And then his oldest brother decided to go back to Sweden and he never came back to the United States. Oscar and his remaining brother went out to Seattle and there he stays there until he hears word that the United States government, it needs a, a railroad up in what we now know as Alaska. Um, Alaska did not become a U.S. territory until 1912. And they already had people in the interior of Alaska just because of the former gold rushes. The closest city to Anchorage was, was Seattle. And so they, in the big, biggest pool of people was Seattle. And he was like the 18th person to come in to Anchorage. And at that time, it was basically a tent city. It was a tent city. Right. But as the tents went down, log cabins came up. Oscar wanted something a little bit better for his family. He met two Swedish craftsmen and he hired them to help build this house. Oscar lived in there from 1916 to 1969. I like to say that Oscar and the house survived the 1964 earthquake in Anchorage. He was a visionary. He was entrepreneurial. He was involved in several different industries. Um, started out as a butcher, right? And then went on to uh, a grocery store and, and added just he, one he thing a, after another. He was a right? part owner of a coal company. And then he helped develop the Anchorage Daily Times, which is now the Anchorage Daily News. And his last business venture was into air aviation. It just seems like he was always looking ahead. Mm -hmm. And his employees said that he was a good employer. Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. a good employer. And you can see that in the economy of the home. That's something else we were talking about, is um, that when you go upstairs, there's not a long hallway stretching out. It's, it's very purposeful. Every room is very purposeful. Um, and the reason we're here is because he recognized the importance of communication. Mm -hmm. And so he became a newspaper man. Yep, he cr helped create the Anchorage Daily Times, which is now known as the Anchorage Daily News. The community must have been fairly literate mm -hmm. for him to recognize that he could even make a go of a newspaper, to even start that and have it be successful. And then so many years later, it, it just continued on and on and on, like you were saying. How long did that newspaper go on? It still exists to this day. You know, and I always find it so remarkable when someone starts some kind of publication and a hundred years later, it's still going, it's still going strong. And um, I think about that for even my own work, like what do, what do I do today that a hundred years from now is still going to have meaning and is still going to evolve with the times. Um, and I think that's what makes Oscar Anderson such a standout and so important. He was from Sweden, so he was educated in Sweden. And, and yeah. Sweden was fully developed and uh, and he was very, I'm sure he was literate in Swedish, because my theory is if you're not literate in your own tongue, you're not going to be literate in anybody else's tongue. I imagine there were, he experienced maybe a variety of languages and people had various types of literacy within their own languages. So here, here he's coming in and saying, okay, I'm going to start a newspaper that's going to communicate with at least these people who are able to read it. And, uh, and that communication will continue to kind of flow out to everybody else. Because um, I know in any, in any community, there are lots of different levels of literacy and different languages and that sort of thing. So it's always kind of complicated. But um, 
but it's it's just so interesting that he recognized not only was there a need for food and shelter and energy and then transportation and transportation because he was there when okay so i don't know when the wright brothers when they the first plane was yeah. the bicycle and right. things but it was in his day and in his day yeah and he got to see the progress from obviously got to see in uh, world war one world war two yes because the city kind of went from the west out to the east, to the mountains. And once that was done, then they had their second airstrip, which was named after the pilot that Oscar Anderson hired for his air transportation. Hmm. Oscar Anderson was instrumental in the development of the city of Anchorage as what we know today um, and what it's going to be. He actually helped develop society. Yes today's society. Oscar Anderson who came out and decided here are some needs. I'm going to make this work. I'm going to build a city. I'm going to build an infrastructure. I'm going to respond to people's needs and I'm going to create uh, I'm going to create things that last, you know, not just ideas. And and uh, and like I said, he seemed to be very economical. Like you mentioned, a good employer, um, a lot of great qualities. And he raised his family here. And that's his jacket. Oh, I mean that's his coat. Not jacket. It's his coat. So that kind of gives you an idea. How yeah. Was. You know, that's an unusual thing. I, I've been to so many literary houses, and when it comes to clothing, usually it's a lot of times you'll see they're from the period, but not directly of the person. Um, we found some clothes in the walls. Really? We in the just, walls. We decided to just preserve this pair of pants and these socks. So, they but they were, that they were but, in the walls. But they usually were around the windows because that's where it's going to be the draftiest. Wow. Uh, and so they kind of stuff them in there. This is her baptismal record in Swedish. Oh. So, this is something that's really interesting. Back in 1917, uh, right by this house, this is a photo of a, of a parade that took place. Yeah, Labor Day. A uh, Labor Day parade. And uh, that took place right on 4th, um, and this, this house is on 5th. And you can see that in the, this float at the very top of the picture here has an American flag showing 48 stars because Alaska and Hawaii were not states yet. Um, but still, I guess they viewed themselves as part of the U.S. Um, as a territory. And look at all the people lined up. This must have been incredibly fun and exciting for them that on Labor Day, which yesterday was Labor Day. Yeah. So this was like a hundred years ago almost. But I just want to thank you so much for your time oh, and, and being part pleasure. of this.